evening. How's everybody doing? I hope that you've had an amazing, absolutely wonderful day. I want to welcome, welcome you to our Wednesday night live Bible study. My name is Chandra, and I am the pastor of Just Christ Ministries along with my pa husband, Pastor Anthony Wright. Um, we are continuing our series this the month of December on Tis the Season. During this series, we are asking the questions, what season are you in and what do you need to do to prepare for your next season as the new year approaches? Um, this focus about seasons and where we are is specifically on Wednesday nights about your mental health. In this season, we are regarding your mental health and what do you need to do to be in better mental health in your next season. We shared over the last three weeks about anxiety, depression, and grief. These subject matters, I pray, have helped those listening better process and compartmentalize some of these mental health, health symptoms. I hope that it has caused someone to become more aware and to think about the spaces and places you are in now and spaces and places you might find yourself in uh, in the seasons coming. Um, God has ordained this time for us to talk about our mental health. And so I'd like to welcome once again the amazing, absolutely amazing, Ms. Tamika Hill, a licensed clinical mental health professional. Ms. Hill, are you there? Ms. Hill? Oh, hi, hi, hi everyone. Hi, <laughs> Happy um, holiday. Yeah, so tonight we'll be uh, talking more specifically about adjustment disorder, right? Yes. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So um, what exactly is that? Because I had no idea that such a disorder existed. I mean, I was like totally baffled when um, <laughs> I knew what the subject matter was going to be for tonight. And I'm like, what is adjustment disorder? Uh, so, so actually, a lot of people in uh, uh, this season are, are going through a disorder. disorder. Mm -hmm. It's a short-term condition that occurs when a person has great difficulties coping with or adjusting to a particular source of stress, such as a major life-changing loss or event, or any transition in your life, breakups, loss of jobs, unstable financial situations, so as we know, COVID has really brought that out right now. So wow. a lot of people are experiencing adjustment disorders right now, and they're very they're unaware of it. Absolutely, because heck, I, I mean, <laughs> I realize that <laughs> I am experiencing an adjustment disorder right now, uh, but I had no idea. I I couldn't have given it uh, a name. Mm -hmm. so I, I could imagine, um, oh my gosh, how many of us are dealing with this right now? Yes, uh, a lot a lot of people. Um, so adjustment disorder actually has four categories. Mm -hmm. And one is adjustment disorder, it's unpacific. The other one is adjustment disorder with depression symptoms. So they're mild symptoms. Mm -hmm. So usually, you know, um, the symptoms of sadness, hopelessness. Um, the other one would be adjustment disorder with anxiety. And that's usually when, you know, you kind of panic. Because, again, you got to remember, adjustment means like something you're no longer controlling. <laughs> and most of us have a problem when we're no longer in control. <laughs> then they have another one that... Um, a lot of my younger people usually experience adjustment disorders with behavioral um, disturbances and mixed emotions. So disturb behavior disturbances are classified as usually acting out in a behavior kind of way, like maybe they're fighting or, you know, doing things that they normally would do outside of their character. Mm -hmm. 
What age group would that necessarily encompass? Actually, believe it or not, that's a lot. So you can even be five years old and your parents are going through a divorce Mm -hmm. and the child maybe starts uh, using the bathroom on themselves again. They're trying to adjust to what's going on in the household. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's, I mean, I really appreciate uh, you being in a space where you have the information that you can give us this stuff because that, you know what, some of those things that you see in, in children, you you just think, you know, again, like they're just acting out. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, oh, being lazy or just wouldn't get up to go to the bathroom or something. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, it's usually um, adjusting to something because oftentimes, again, parents make decisions, understandably so, mm-hmm. but... Um, we forget to talk to the young people involved. They're involved just as much as you are and they deserve to know what's going on because again, to some degree, they want some control. If you think about young people when they get possessive over toys. So we learn to try to control things at a young age. Mm -hmm. So imagine again, doesn't matter how old you are now, the things that you were adjusted to as your norm no longer being your norm. So, I mean, talking about young people, this whole uh, not in school could be, uh, could contribute to that. Um, I'm thinking like, what about like when you go from maybe uh, eighth grade to high school, high school to college? Yes, those are adjustment disorders. Some people have like a hard time transitioning. Usually, the ones I see a lot is usually that eight to freshman grade, you know, mm-hmm. because you're usually going from a smaller school to a bigger school. Mm-hmm. College, they're kind of looking forward to it. Okay. The transition comes in for them adjusting to the atmosphere once they're there. Okay. So going sense. is not usually the, the teens, you know, problem because they want to get away from our, all of us adults, right? Yeah, <laughs> they think, oh, true. I got freedom. And once they got this freedom, now you're trying to adjust to so much freedom. Uh And that can be overwhelming because that's how some young people get lost in the sauce, you know, Mm -hmm. because it's so much freedom that it becomes very overwhelming and you forget to go to class (laughs) or do your homework. Right, because now they don't have someone controlling uh, everything that they do. So they're still making adjustments. Yes. Wow. And so COVID is a big adjustment for our young people. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of, we talk a lot about the adults, but in homeschooling is huge for, you know, the kids now think about the teenagers who all their life, it was built up for prom and graduation Yes, and not to have that or the prom send off or the graduation, uh, what do you call it? The college send off, you know, Mm -hmm. imagine this is what we basically have groomed them to look forward to. Absolutely. And now that it came, they couldn't have it. That's an adjustment. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a pretty big adjustment too. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that, like you said, we've um, it's expected. It's part of what we typically do, and to and for nobody to be able to satisfy. Um, in this space that we're in, um, them not being able to do that is is definitely an adjustment. I would imagine adjustment for peer, uh, parents. Um, I know that we're still in this space, and I have a son that will be um, graduating um, June uh, May twenty twenty one, and I, I promise you, I've been it's been on my mind. God, I hope we're out of this space because mm-hmm. I would really I would really love to attend the graduation. You know what I mean? Um, right. I know that for him it's probably uh, a real adjustment trying to think about whether or not that would really happen and and so when I go back to all the kids who last year college eighth grade high school who did not get that opportunity um, some of them I spoke to they were very saddened by it you know and then Mm -hmm. I was thinking about some of the kids who actually transitioned from eighth grade to freshman year have not set foot in school most of them you know Mm -hmm. so they're doing their freshman year online, you know, and that's, that's like, gotta be kind of interesting. You have not physically uh, met 
half of the school, right? Because when you're in class, right. you're dealing with the people who are in your class. And let's not forget the sports. Absolutely. There's no sports. That's a big part of high know? school. Right. No At cheerleading, college, yeah. no track. <laughs> yeah. So so I could so. imagine that, um, you know, our kids are are really dealing with some things in addition to, you know, some of the adults because – um, figure the kids are not in school. Parents have to make an adjustment called uh, the ones who are not working from home, trying to figure mm-hmm. out what to do with their uh, students who are at home. Some mm-hmm. age appropriate to stay at home, others not. So mm-hmm. we're in a, I mean, a really big adjustment period as a nation, you know, as a people. Yes. And so yes. all of us are probably walking around, not even, like I said, realizing that we're dealing with a mental health symptom. Yes, it's it, it's in the DSM-5, <laughs> which is what we go by to diagnose people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> From wow. the physicians to the counselors, uh, psychologists. So yes, it is a, it's real. A lot of people, a lot of clients that I've had and they like, well, what am I just being diagnosed with? I got depression. I'm like, no, you're just trying to adjust. And you're having symptoms trying to adjust to this particular event. Now, I got a question. How how long can one um, stay in an adjustment uh, space where this symptom is still identified as an adjustment disorder? And I'm asking that question because sometimes it takes, it might take me longer to adjust than, than you. Um, mm-hmm. And so... How long should an adjustment, how long is an adjustment period? I mean, is it ongoing? Can it be two years? Is it six months? So with the DSM-5, we're going to say six to six months to a year, mm-hmm. right? Um, after that, they start looking at it as a more chronic adjustment disorder. And that's when it takes on the depression, the anxiety, um, those when they those diagnoses become more of the primary diagnosis and the mm-hmm. adjustment becomes the second because now you're starting to deal with more symptoms. And you're right, some people take longer to adjust, but speaking so the symptoms should digress as you're learning to adjust. You're still adjusting, but the symptoms should be digressing as you're still learning to adjust. They shouldn't be increasing. And don't get me wrong, if they are increasing, then that means, hey, we just got to step up some more coping skills and maybe we need to start looking at depression and anxiety being the primary here now. So at what point do you start to look at that? At what point do you recognize or realize that um, you've moved in a different into a different symptom Um, because I heard you say that the symptoms should decrease but what does Mm -hmm. that mean to a person who's not a professional I mean to somebody like me who wouldn't identify (laughs) um, hey my symptoms are getting better right Um, so let's go with depression right so with depression say um, your your adjustment disorder with depression Mm -hmm. so you came in originally not really sleeping, easily irritable. And that was more so five out of seven days. That's how you were. Okay. So after the six month mark, if that hasn't like decreased to me as a professional, now I'm going to start looking at, okay, what's, what else is going on also Mm -hmm. that now we're starting to look at depression as becoming the primary because you haven't decreased in any of the symptoms you came in the door with. It's kind of like a cold. Okay. So for you come in, like most people don't really run to the doctor for a cold. They'll kind of like either let it run its course or they'll take some tea or cough syrup. But after two to three weeks, you're still coughing and you're sick. You go to the doctor because it's prolonging. So the same thing with adjustment disorder, except you just have more time usually six months to a year. So I would say about maybe the eighth or ninth month, that's when you kind of start looking at, okay, like what else do we need to start implementing here? Because you should be kind of um, decreasing in your symptoms and increasing of feeling better and being more in control of what you can control. That's good. That's good. 
Um, so is it safe to say that, because we talked about anxiety, depression, we talked about grief. Is it safe to say that anxiety will start at adjustment? Adjustment is maybe the thing that we're dealing with first and then anxiety and depression show up? Or is it possible to like just skip over adjustment disorder and be right into a place of anxiety, anxiousness, or depression? Yes, it totally is. Like some people, okay, so let's go with depression, right? Um, now, say how we would distinguish between adjustment and depression because depression, you have nothing, no stressor, stressors that you can pinpoint to say this is an adjustment disorder. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how we can tell the difference. That, but versus you say, oh, um, I lost a parent or I went through a breakup. Well, that's an adjustment because that's a transition. Even with grief, right? Mm -hmm. We can say you might be an adjustment disorder with depression, mm -hmm. depending on how severe the symptoms is, are because you have to think, again, a loss is a major change. Um, so that is an adjustment period. But if the symptoms are very heavy in lingering in the depression department we're probably going to go to depression versus adjustment because you have more symptoms on that side because that may be in the past when we look at the past too right mm -hmm. how have you dealt with other things in the past has this been a pattern um that you kind of go into depression when you're things you can't control so that would make me more say okay that's depression that's not an adjustment because that's kind of what you tend to lean to when things are going on you kind of go into this depression mode like some people have seasonal depression which is mm -hmm. r a real thing um because mm -hmm. they're less sun yeah it's not a, a official diagnosis let me say that but you have to think if you're we need sun usually to make us happy mm -hmm. um to be out in the air so in the winter time it's dark it's gloomy you're not as active mm -hmm. so some people have seasonal what they call seasonal depression wow i i am learning so much my own self during this series and i really hope that the people are getting it um getting information enough to compartmentalize um where they might be uh mentally emotionally spiritually physically um even financially because um, I would imagine <laughs> just thinking about that, a loss of a job is an adjustment. Mm -hmm. And so finances get affected, bills, what you can and can't do. Uh, so it takes you as well into an adjustment space, right? Mm -hmm. wow. Yes. I would say probably 99.9, .9, like DNA, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. is dealing with adjustment disorder during COVID. I don't care if you have money or don't have money mm -hmm. because some way, some form, it has affected you. Yes. And we, we no have matter, to, you know, what's going on. Right. So you're saying everybody in this space have had to adjust one way or the other. Yes, we all have. I mean, even if you think about it, like, the a rich person, you still like your stock was affected if you're an investor. <laughs> um, if you're a landlord, more than likely you might have some tenants not paying, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of, you know, like I've uh some of the places I some of the people I talk to, the commercial building, people like we're talking about big businesses not paying their lease. So yeah. the building owners are suffering because they can't pay their lease because you're thinking about it. They're functioning at 20% capacity, 25, maybe. That is indeed true. This is so much bigger than what we know, right? Mm -hmm. This adjustment disorder. I mean, um, so everybody listening, I, I really hope you're hearing. It doesn't mean that you're crazy or something is you're unstable. Just take into consideration um, some of what you've had to process over this last few months. I mean, we're, we're embarking on a year of being shut down, you know, to some degree. In March, you know, is when all this stuff started. So uh, give yourself some time to process. Mm -hmm. Think about, really think about what you've had to go through and 
consider what other people have had to uh, deal with in terms of adjusting, you know? Right. Clinically, we define it as adjusting to the unknown and uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. So this season... Say that again. Adjusting to the unknown and uncontrollable. Uh, So this season really embraces that statement (laughs) first we we have a disease that it's we can't see it it's unknown like there's not a lot of you know studies out there like they're trying to get I know science is trying to catch up but um there's not a lot out there to know about it Mm -hmm. but something we can't see is harming people right Mm -hmm. and then you can't even control whether you could go to the bank whether you could go to work, whether you could go outside, whether you could go to the restaurant, whether you could even go work out. <laughs> this is this is very very true. Yeah. So so how how would you um suggest do you have any thought processes behind how uh you you definitely made clear how you can identify that you're moving or dealing with an adjustment disorder? But are there some things that we could do um, to help us manage or deal with or cope with uh, this adjustment disorder? Oh, definitely, definitely. You know, my first foremost is always my favorite. Acknowledge, Mm -hmm. acknowledge, acknowledge. What Mm -hmm. you do not acknowledge, you cannot deal with. Mm -hmm. You have to confront the devil just head on sometimes. You can't ignore the demon in the room, the elephant in the room. Yes, yes, um, yes, So yes. you have to acknowledge that you're having some difficulties coping with something that you no longer have control over. And yeah. not only acknowledging that you're having some difficulties, what are your actual feelings with that? Because like, it's, like I said, it could be different. One person could be experiencing depressive symptoms so they could be sad versus another person's the whole other spectrum they're panicking so that's anxiety Mm -hmm. and that's connected to how you feel right that's definitely those are feelings so if i'm gonna say identify what you feel um i feel hopeless Mm -hmm. okay i feel like this is never gonna end i feel like all i want to do is sleep so that's acknowledging what you're actually feeling. So then now we're starting to identify some symptoms. Okay. Um, so it's, first you really first have to just say, you know what? I am having a problem that I can't control what's going on, period. Mm-hmm. And then discover what actual feelings are connected to what you can't control. Those are very key to the first step in moving forward. And it's okay to acknowledge them because sometimes... And um, I'll speak to it culturally. Sometimes um, that identifies that you're weak or, you know, it's like just, I mean, what's wrong with you? Get over it. Move on. I've said that to people and I've said that to myself. Like Mm -hmm. um, I feel, and maybe that's a a part of me not being in control, but I I feel like if I admit that, you know, hey, I, I feel really hopeless that I need to just get up, shake myself, and and move past feeling hopeless. But you're mm-hmm. saying we should acknowledge that hopelessness and and deal with it, mm-hmm. not just because it like under the rug. Right, because what happens is, especially culturally, we're taught be strong, move on, you know. But at the end of the day, all you're doing is like. You picked up the rug and swept the dirt under the rug. Mm -hmm. So eventually, guess what? Your mama going to pull that rug up and see all that dirt. (laughs) And eventually it's going to stain the floor. So the same thing with the body. If you keep ignoring what you're feeling and never acknowledge it, eventually your mental health is going to deal with your physical health. It always affects one or the other. So if you keep saying, no, I'm I'm bigger than this. I'm stronger than this. That's not going to, because a lot of people, COVID not going to control me. And it's not about controlling you. It's just about acknowledging, look, I'm having a moment. I cannot control what's going on. And I Mm -hmm. feel some type of way about that. That's okay. That's not weak. It's actually strong to be able to admit what we can't control. That's actually strength. Um, So you have to think like, if you keep ignoring it though, 
your body starts to build up stress and tension in your shoulders, your neck, your head starts hurting. And you're wondering where all this pressure is coming from because you keep lying to yourself saying, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And you're not. And it's okay not to be okay. That's, I mean, we keep saying that. We've said that like, like every week. It's okay to not be okay. Mm -hmm. That's super huge. Um, the That's second cool. one we do is we have to learn to manage our emotions. <laughs> That's the first part of it, right? Help. Help. <laughs> um, we have to check ourselves like, okay, I can't control this. But does that mean I get out of control with my emotions now? Hmm. Like, no, we got to check those emotions. Like, okay, take a step back. Being out of control with your emotions is not going to help the problem anymore. It's going to actually worsen the problem. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Right. Me too. I, I'm a little better, but I, I, I could see areas where I, I really still need help managing emotions. Um, I don't, I, I think sometimes I do it by accident. Mm -hmm. Um, but how do you intentionally manage your emotions? How, how does one, how do you do that? So if you know you irritate, because why sometimes you gonna go that around stuff people? is spared a moment and it catch you off guard, you know, it does. But then, um, you have to check yourself. The other day, I was speaking with someone and I I was irritated with them because of what they did. And then I said, you know what, Tamika, right now you let the devil use you. Get your man right. What was the purpose of this call? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was me having to be self-aware. So managing your, your own emotions takes a lot of self-awareness. Okay. You know when you're body act different you know when your mind is starting to tense up you know when you're starting to feel some type of way because you are becoming more self-aware and self-evolved into yourself so that's the key of learning to manage your emotions is being self-aware so, so if i know i'm so if i know i'm irritable then i know i don't need to probably go around people because i'm probably gonna find 10 things wrong with them people <laughs> That's good. So that's part of managing your emotions. If you know you angry about something, go don't go nitpicking with your kids. Well, why you didn't do this? Why you didn't go lay down? Go to sleep. Go watch TV. <laughs> that's really good. <laughs> yeah. Because I've been, and it's I'm laughing because as you're talking, I can envision moments when I've done that. Because mm -hmm. we irritated and upset. We want everybody else to be. Because we're not really dealing with our own emotion. Mm -hmm. So now we want everybody else to be in our energy. And it's like, no, just go sit down, as the old people go say. Sit down, child. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And, and the other, other part is respond to change appropriately. appropriately. So you, like, sometimes we respond to things, but they're not appropriate. Mm -hmm. COVID has brought out and I'm going to be sensitive about that because I know people are very passionate views about that right um, so you have to respond appropriately to things and, and make sure, sure that you're not um, over exerting your emotions into something that at the end of the day will bring you no purpose so it's like the old saying goes pick your arguments <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, because you responding to something that's not going to pay you back at all. So learning to respond to change, like if this change and you can't control it, you becoming angry and arguing and belligerent is not going, it's not an appropriate response and it's not going to change anything. It's actually going to make it worse. Mm -hmm. So you have to ask yourself, what's the appropriate response? to the change that's happening right now. A couple and, examples. I mean. Um, so think about it. If you, uh, let me think. Mm, oh, good one. So at work, right? Uh, the teachers, I love the teachers. <laughs> um, they were, of course, very upset with the e-learning. Mm -hmm. Um. 
so the student and I get both the frustrations because the students are frustrated because the teachers are learning as the students are learning. But of course, the students and the parents feel they're irritated that the teacher's supposed to know everything. But the teacher doesn't know because the teacher is learning with them as well. Mm -hmm. But the teacher has to also recognize that they're frustrated. So you can't match people's energy. So when the parent That's go good. yelling because you're in it, because you're um, they're upset about all the change. You don't have to match their energy because you have to realize they're upset about the change that's happening. And that's where they're at. That doesn't mean you have to respond with the same energy they have. You can take control of your energy and respond appropriately. And whatever that circumstances is like, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. Um, I understand. And that's all you can say. That's it. I can't fix what I don't even understand and acknowledge that people only can argue with themselves. So people can get louder and louder and louder. What are they going to do? Most of us are on computers talking. So them being louder and louder is not going to do anything to you. <laughs> really? True. Physically, it's no harm. So just as professionals, sometimes we have to make sure we're responding appropriately. And I'm just using teachers for an example, but on the flip side, parents as well. Mm -hmm. Parents are becoming belligerent with the teacher, but really you're upset because you maybe lost your job or you have to figure out how to stay home and do e-learning with your child and find how to do and feed the child more because you know children eat more, mm -hmm. right? While they're at home yes. and here it is, I'm making less money or I'm working at home alone with you trying to understand all these Zoom meetings with your e-learning. So yeah. understand that you're frustrated and are you responding appropriately to what the teacher has going on with your child? Or are you really dealing with your frustration of what you can't control? So now you're trying to go over here and control something that you can't even control over there. That's really good. I, I think I hear you saying we need to identify the root of mm -hmm. our emotion yes so that we can um, move in a direction that's more appropriate for what's really going on and not what we might be dealing with surfacely right and that's where self-awareness kicks in mm -hmm. like if you find yourself getting irritated with another and like a lot of people were with the tissue, right? Mm -hmm. You're mad about, oh, I can't get tissue. You have tissue at home. What are you mad about? <laughs> like, you know, you, you're mad because somebody, or like, you know, oh, I know a big one. When people cut you off mm -hmm. <laughs> in traffic, right? Mm -hmm. And we get mad and we feel like we got to match the energy. That's not really responding appropriately to the situation. That's so funny because <laughs> yesterday, uh, Pastor and I were driving, and I I was I had been out for a long time. I I was exhausted, had driven um, from one side of the earth it felt like to the other, and mm -hmm. and at one point, and you know, it's like the closer I got to being home, the mm -hmm. more anxious I became, and I could feel it. I could feel me being, <sighs> you know what I'm saying? Because now I just mm -hmm. want to get home. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm like maybe four blocks from, no, maybe 10 blocks from the house. And at one point this car was like in front of me and it's just like the light is green. Why don't you freaking go? And so mm -hmm. I'm like, will you just please go? And so, you know, my son and pastor's in the car. Nobody said anything. Then I got to about seven blocks from home. And once uh -huh. again there's another car in front of me and it's like just sitting and the light is green. And I'm, I, then I honk the horn like, uh, uh, will you move out of the way, please? And Pastor was like, will you quit hollering in my ear? And now I'm like, <laughs> I'm not hollering in your ear. I'm way over here in the driver's seat. And you're way over there. Your ears over there, I'm not hollering in your ear. And so it went from me just because <laughs> At the end of the day, I was mm -hmm. just ready to be to go home. home. That mm -hmm. was really my issue. 
But oh my doggone it, when nobody's moving and then he's like, you're hollering in my ear. I'm like, what's hollering in your ear really mean? If I get really close to you and I go, ah, that's me hollering in your ear. I'm not hollering in your ear. You know how that just made me feel? And you know what? I mean, it, it, I mean, thank you so much because I'm processing that. I processed it yesterday, but listening to you, God is, I mean, God is a comedian. He's like super hilarious, right? God right. Take responsibility for yourself. Do you hear what you're saying? And I'm like, what am I saying? Except I didn't holler in your ear. And so, <laughs> and, and so it went so uh, someplace else. I mean, it was fine. It was very minor and minute. But um, to your point, I was not able in that moment to deal with what was really going on with me. You know what I'm saying? Because you couldn't, could control, couldn't control getting at home on time. <laughs> of the real issue. You know, mm -hmm. my real issue, you mm -hmm. know, it wasn't because on a, another day, it wouldn't have bothered me that that person moved through the green light slowly. You mm -hmm. know, so you're right. In that moment, I was very, I was not self-aware. <laughs> not at no, all. No, you was irritated and just ready to go home. Absolutely. Frustrated, irritated to probably the 10th power. And I'm just right. like, you don't get from in front of me right now. <laughs> And, that, you know, a lot of people are very much like that with, with uh, the season that we're in mm -hmm. um, because finances are tight for some people yes. for Christmas. Um, been out. I've been out to just pick up a few things from Target, mm -hmm. not even um, shopping, Christmas shopping. But I just seen like the impatience of the people in the line. And I was thinking to myself, like, you already know it's Christmas time. What are you mad about? It's yes. going to be crowded. One, because it's Christmas time. Two, it's COVID season. Six feet, less workers, more people. Rules, so, boundaries. Right. So it's like, are you really responding appropriately? Are you even being realistic about what's going on right now? That's really good. That's good. We need to be realistic mm -hmm. about what's really going on. Right. So you could be self-aware to check your emotions and manage them appropriately. Um, the last one is we have to learn new ways to adjust to the new changes. So right now, yeah, I know we have the vaccine and a lot of people have their viewpoints about that respectfully. So, but we still have to wear masks mm -hmm. and that's still an adjustment for people. We still have a lot of um we come from a society of touching and up close and personal. But now if you notice, there's always like plexiglass somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, you can't go in here. Like there's so much distance. So how do you adjust? Even right now, as we're going into Christmas in just two days, we can't go to our families or we have to minimize how many people are going to be at the gathering. How do we find new ways to really adjust and not just adjust physically as far as appropriately to be safe, but mentally mm -hmm. being okay in this space. Like I can't hug you. Um, and even now they're being cautious about, you know, the elbow bumps that people used to do. Um, wow. So it's like, we have to make sure we're really monitoring that we're adjusting not just physically but mentally to the new changes that we are in as of now it doesn't mean that it'll stay this way forever so we can't work on emotions with this is a forever but this is the season we're in and adjust to the season and not make it a permanent thing the next part is take control of how we're internalizing ironically what you were saying about <laughs> you he's telling yes. you like you're yelling in my ear but you are internalizing it and making it personal absolutely uh, <laughs> right yes. so that that's another thing we have to do take control of how we're internalizing what's going on and are he we said that, but i couldn't hear correctly? it in that moment mm -hmm. I can't right well you, you know the social workers in us absolutely. like <laughs> you're taking it personal <laughs> Um, and make sure that we're internalizing what's really happening versus saying, Hey, we're the victim. Yeah. And responding according to the victim versus responding to like, this is just what's happening to everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the season we're in. 
Um, I would love to close off with this. The biggest lesson to learn that I want people to take away is learning to adjust to the changes that are beyond your control. Everything is not happening against you, but for you. Um, a lot of times we're like, ah, this, everything is happening to me. Why me? Why me? Why me? First of all, why not you? But everything that's happening is not against you. Yes. It, it's for you, for your better. How you process it really helps you evolve, yes. no matter if it's good or bad. Yes. Even like friendships and relationships have broken up because of COVID and, and the politics and the viewpoints. And it's like, wow, when did we become so ego driven that everything is about us? <laughs> you know? That's good. Yes. And everything is not like, you know, and that's not, this is not me speaking. It's just the general, what I'm saying about everything, like everybody is not attacking you. Yes. You know? Yes. So some things you need to stop and process and learn from, and that benefits you, you know? And we have to learn that. Every negative thing that happened is not bad against, it may be something bad that happened, but it's up to us to take that offense and how we process it. It doesn't have to be against us. It can be for us a lesson learned or whatever. I know you've helped some people this month. I, you've helped me. Oh, I, I feel like you. I'm like in a counseling session. Honestly. <laughs> um, and I, I really, I really, 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 really pray that um, people uh, get some amazing takeaways from this series. Um, you are phenomenal. Thank you. And I, I really appreciate you letting the people know everything is it, not against you. Even if it was a bad thing, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that the goal was to hurt or injure or interfere or disrupt your life. It's working for our good, really. Mm -hmm. you know, and the Bible talks about that. You know, mm -hmm. all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. So no matter how challenging what I hear you saying, um, is some of these symptoms that we experience, they're uh, catapulted by different things, series of events, um, moments, and if we could internalize them and process them properly, then we could move forward uh, dealing with them in a positive way. Yes. You know, and, and um, I, I, am, I am grateful and I am thankful and I, I trust that God knows his people and that he mm -hmm. knows what we're all in need of. And I believe that he would not have taken every Wednesday this month to waste your time, my time, the people's time to share such amazing information at no charge. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, people pay to hear this stuff sitting on your couch. Um, so I'm, I'm elated. I am grateful. I am thankful to you, Lord, for just allowing a Tamika Hill to exist and to be in this space um, right now, because I know that uh, you've used her in this hour, in this season, in this series to bring some clarity and some hope and, and make some things plain. In, in our mental space that we otherwise would not have understood. And so I, I encourage anyone and everyone listening, if you feel like you need to talk further about some of these subject matters, please, 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 whether it's Ms. Hill or somebody else, reach out for help. Call somebody. Amen. Amen. Get yourself scheduled. Uh, to sit on the couch and don't don't deal with this stuff from a cultural perspective because we sometimes uh, feel like when we do that that we got to be crazy and if anybody knows that I'm saying the counselor then there's something wrong with me not at all it's something right with you 
mm-hmm. you've identified, you've internalized, you've processed that something is going on and mm-hmm. it's not normal. Mm-hmm. Right? And so Amen. thank you so much for your expertise, all of your your uh, help, all the, the coping skills that you've given, all of the definitions so you can help us uh, compartmentalize and put this these emotions in a place help us look at our own mental health i thank you for being transparent yes you, you shared a lot about yourself and, and just some situations so it, it's not like the the professional is got it all together you know? that's amen <laughs> and you know and so i'm i'm really 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 grateful i always say to one of my um um really good friends um, who's a counselor that counselors need counselors um, but truth be told I think all of us need somebody that we can bounce stuff off of you know whether you're sitting yes. on the couch talking to your pastor or talking to a friend somebody you trust who can give you good sound advice you mm-hmm. know, to process some of your thoughts so I, I really appreciate you thank you so much for your time thank you for having me it has been my pleasure yes so so we're going to close with prayer and um lord god in the name of jesus i come asking you lord god i am petitioning the throne on behalf of your people your sheep god those who you've called those who you anointed god those who you birthed lord god all of us belong to you we we function and move about in different capacities we have uh different job functions different responsibilities lord god but at the end of the day we're your children and i know that you love us and that you care and that you're concerned about us and so i thank you lord god for loving us enough to pour into us in this season some information to help us process some things that that look a little strange to us, some things that we don't really understand, some things that we have not been able to clarify in our own minds. Look, I thank you for causing it to uh, become absolutely normal. I thank you for regulating in our minds just with this information that we're not crazy, that we're not slow, we're not dumb, we're not stupid. Our life is not wasted, Lord God. We're worth it, that we're worthy, that we're loved. Lord God, and that we matter and that we have purpose. I thank you, Lord God, that that you're able to get inside of our heads, inside of our hearts, and begin to turn some things around um, as it speaks to our mental health, God. I thank you for normalizing this space called COVID, this space called e-learning and working from home and Lord God, all of this that we're we're just so not used to and we don't have the ability to control. I thank you for I'm asking that you would grant us your perfect peace that our minds will regulate God. That we're able to be in a better place mentally that we'll understand the season that you're taking us in, Lord God, and that our mental health is a big part of that, and that we have to, we have to give attention to our mind and how we process things, that we will render our minds, our thoughts to you, God. And when it's not in a good place, God, as we identify for our own selves, not identifying for other people. Lord God, that we would that we would go to you and ask you, God, can you regulate my mind? Can you cause my mind to be whole? Can you bring it into a place of perfect peace? And so, Lord, I thank you because I know that you're able to do it, God. All we have to do is ask. And so I thank you that your grace is sufficient, that your mercy is available. God, and I bless you for being concerned about us. 
I thank you for loving us unconditionally, Lord God. I thank you for causing us to be aware, to identify the purpose and why we're still breathing, Lord God. I ask that you would use us for your glory, Lord God, that you will cause any symptom that exists to dissipate, not because we shoved it on the rug, Lord God, because we've acknowledged it and we accepted the help that you've provided for us. I thank you for, by your son's stripes, we are healed mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, financially, Lord. That is nothing, nothing that the blood can't handle. I give you glory, and I give you honor, and I give you praise for being an amazing, all-sufficient God. I ask that you will hear my prayer and that you will cause it to be so in Jesus' name, I bless you and I thank you, God. Amen. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. I thank you for your time. I encourage you to share this information. You may know somebody that's challenged or dealing with some things mentally and emotionally. I believe that this information would uh, ultimately point them in a direction of, of getting a fresh start. Or at least understand it and normalize in the space that they're in. So I encourage you to share it. I encourage you to go back and listen to it again. Um, if it's blessed you, maybe you missed some parts that will help you better process. I encourage you to reach out to somebody to say, I need some help. I just need you to listen to me. I'm trying to process this and, and I, I need to, to get a second set of ears. So, so you guys be blessed. You have an amazing rest of the evening. Happy holidays to you. Uh, we will back, be back here same place, a different time, on Sunday, uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, Apostle, uh, Dr. Apostle Dolores Moore will be sharing with us on Sunday. I encourage you to tune in. She's going to be finalizing our series on Tis the Season. So I encourage you to tune in 10 o'clock on Sunday. Um, our 9 o'clock is our uh, Sunday school. You can chime in on Zoom. Just price you know where to go. Uh, so you guys be blessed. You have an amazing and safe holidays. Thank you so much. God bless you and good night. Uh -huh.